our second speaker in our seminar series is Andrei Mozaiski, and he is the associate professor at Department of Ancient and Medieval History of the Institute of History and Politics at Moscow State Pedagogical University. And he's also a senior researcher at the Institute for Strategy of Educational Development at the Russian Academy for Education. So welcome, Andre. And my first question really is about your general research interests. Um, so how did you even get to Pausanias particularly? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your interesting question. Uh, I think uh, my um, um, interest in uh, Greek history started from uh, the school where the teacher of English said to us that we have to translate some poetry of English poets. And you know, uh, I, I choose Byron and uh, the Greek song, you know, <laughs> Greece arrives, uh, arrives against the falls and so on, and the sons of Greeks uh, arise and so on. Uh, but uh, after that, uh, as a university, I read Pausanias and I was, uh, was amazed uh, of his description. And I had in mind that maybe some, someday I come to Greece and open Pausanias and I will go and take a look and, at all these monuments surrounds me. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> it couldn't happen, uh, but uh, after that, Mm, the situation brought me to Greece and it was invitation by Professor John Bintliff of uh, uh, Leiden University. And uh, in 2009 I, uh, nine, I came to uh, Beosha uh, and we um, field walking at the Coronea and uh, it was reminds me of Pausanias again. And, uh, I started to study material culture uh, because Professor Bitlev said me, uh, uh, you know, the picture was like that. Uh, he gave me uh, a shirt and said, which period? And I say, mm, maybe classical. He said, no, it's a cake. And I understood that I know nothing at all. <laughs> and I went back to Moscow and uh, uh, bought a lot of books on ceramics, on mm, fortifications and uh, then when I uh, started to work uh, at the summer seasons at FIPS uh, conducted by Aravantinas, Vasilis Aravantinas, uh, a foreign emeritus uh, of the ocean antiquities and uh, everything uh, was possible to, uh, to connect Pausanias uh, his texts with uh, topography, with a real material culture of Thebes, and uh, I start to proceed. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, Pausanias and John Bintliff as the two people who brought you to Boeotia, that's quite a combination, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, but I, that also makes it now easy to understand why you have such a detailed knowledge of Thebes and can actually explain Pausanias and the myths in the landscape to us so well. I mean, I, I think this is, this is really something that I'll be taking away from your paper, is, is really the detailed knowledge of Thebes and how that fits with the text. I mean, would you like to give us a short summary of your, of your paper or the main arguments? Yes. Uh, the main arguments is that Pausanias uh, had a different traditions in his texts. S some of them uh, is a Theban traditions and some of them a different traditions from other cities, uh, which also reflects the Theban history, but on the, in a different way. And it could be the Negrian tradition, it could be Athenian tradition, and sometimes uh, even some uh, um, Athenian dramatist as uh, uh, Aeschylus or Euripides brought different tradition, traditions about Thebes, about the um, history of seven again Thebes in particular. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, the history about Amphiaraus and his death uh, in Thebes, uh, it was a Theban tradition, but there, were, there was another one, the Tanagrian one tradition, uh, 
where the earth swallowed down Pharaoh with his chariot, not in Thebes, but at Harma, uh, a city uh, quite far away from Thebes, but on the halfway between Thebes and Tanagra. And as uh, Harma uh, was in the, uh, at the sphere on, of influence of Tanagra, the Tanagran version then came to European versions where the Oracle of Amphiarius was established uh, in the late 5th century BC and then this version um, transferred to uh, Euripides one. So Aeschylus a little bit earlier represents Theban version but Euripides uh, later represents Tanegran one and uh, it's quite interesting and other monuments around Thebes they are Mm, symbolize the uh, patriotism of uh, the Theban citizens, the Theban warriors against uh, the enemy, uh, in particular uh, of the mythical past of Argives. And uh, these monuments, they are different in, uh, in their construction and uh, different, different uh, in their periods of construction also, because some of them can be traced back to Mycenaean times, like uh, mm, uh, chamber tombs, and uh, some of them can be much later, uh, can have uh, the construction much later, such as um, Hellenistic monuments or even uh, mm, Roman times as well. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I really think this is such a good example that really shows us how these different traditions develop locally and how Pausanias, how many of them end up in Pausanias as a, as a mix, but how we can also tell a whole story of, of traditions. And, and I think your mix of archaeology and text really illustrates that extremely well. I mean, I have to say it's such a dense example that I, I, I will go away and think about it for a long time, I think. And I think it's taught me quite a bit about Pausanias. Thank you, Dr. Pressler.